What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast, episode 130. My name is Brett, a.k.a. Enigma9011, and you can catch this podcast live over on twitch.tv slash Enigma9011 every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. You join the chat if you're a subscriber over there. We'd love to have you, but if you can't catch it live, that's A-OK. It drops over on YouTube. Uh, topic by topic and as put as one big video and mp3 for your amusement on the following friday on those podcast services last but not least hashtag ad merch store get all of your swag over there t-shirts cups backpacks and more rep the brand support us we'd love you for it today we're flying solo once again so will it be a super short one like last week maybe we'll see who knows um but today i want to talk about a new game that i just started playing thursday this past thursday as of recording and i want to talk about a game called nobody saves the world what a title what a title just dropped this past thursday on the playstation side of things and i believe also on nintendo switch so now it is on playstation platforms the switch xbox platforms and on steam so you can check it out anywhere and it was recommended to me by the 61 indie crew shout out to mike and kyle and they had nothing but praise for this game. A lot of fun, entertaining, and boy, were they right. Stream was a good time with it, and I've been playing, I think I played about four hours on stream, potentially five, and at this point of recording, I'm at 13 hours <laughs> that I've played this game. Um, and it's been a blast. It's one of those games where the developers, Drinkbox Studios, it's a very quirky story like how they're <laughs> presenting it very unique in characters and that uniqueness and strangeness strangeness makes it appealing but the story they also have behind it is interesting it's intriguing the main gameplay or concept is it's like a dungeon crawler essentially not like a hades where it's point a to point b random generated blah 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 it's more of like here's your map and you have a dungeon over here at this level, a dungeon over here at this level, dungeon over here at this level. And you'll get different quests, either clear the dungeons or go there and help a certain character with this task. You go that, go to that place, and then you just have to make your way through. There's all these different monsters and villains. You go room to room, level to level, and essentially try and defeat everybody there. And I think you know, the story they're trying to build and the gameplay works so well together that it just flows. It's really good. It doesn't feel like something that is a chore and it doesn't feel like something that's a heavy task. It's weird, but it's almost like you can turn your brain off <laughs> and play this game. You know, it's not something that's going to make you scratch your head or hate yourself, Elden Ring, <laughs> or anything like that. It's just simply fun. And along with the strange characters your main character nobody has a unique ability to them and it's the fact that they can change their form or their appearance and in changing their form and appearance it gives your character new abilities so for example as nobody he can't do too much he can run around he can slap people it looks like a palm strike but that's about it. As you learn these new forms, there's a lot of them. Some make sense as like a dungeon crawler, like a guard or a ranger, where you have a sword or you have a bow. But then there's other classes that are just, once again, ridiculous and obscure. You could be a rat. You can be a slug. You could be a horse. You could be a zombie. You could be a ghost. And it's like, what? what's a rat gonna do <laughs> in this situation but with the different characters that they allow you to be once you you know get enough progression in the game the different characters are a lot of fun to play with for example the rat very very fast he just you know chomps at the enemies but if you increase his level enough he can have poison attached to his attacks and if people are poisoned you can detonate them to do explosive damage to other enemies 
If you're a zombie, your health constantly goes down. But as you attack people, your health goes up because you're technically eating them. And you can convert other enemies to zombies to help you out. Or you're a horse which just gallops around, but you got to kick everything. <laughs> it's just, it's so weird that it just, it, it's so entertaining. It's entertaining to go around and try out all these different forms and play through the dungeons as them. Now, another thing that I think helps with trying out these different characters and makes it appealing, I mentioned the quests of like going out to dungeons, clear this dungeon, help this person here with this task. You have those main quests, but then you also have side quests and progression quests for the different forms. So depending on their abilities, maybe use a certain ability so many times or use it against an enemy or hit so many at the same time. And it gives you like these mini goals to chase after, to make your character stronger, to improve, you know, your experience with the game. It accomplishes that. And it makes it appealing. It's that trail of breadcrumbs <laughs> to keep you invested and keep you going. Obviously, once again, you have the big story, those bigger goals, but then you have these smaller things that you want to chase after and achieve. And all in all, it works together great. So right now, those forms that I talked about, I have 12 unlocked of the 17 or so forms. So I still have a little bit of work to do in unlocking them, but so far I have no complaints for the forms that I've unlocked. I don't feel like any of them are like super boring. There's definitely ones I prefer. I think uh, my favorite so far, um, the rat is surprisingly very humorous. I think that's maybe just me thinking the art is adorable of how he like dabs and stuff as you pick them. Um, the guard has been a very reliable one, obviously s swinging a sword around and stomping in a big area of effect attack. It's always reliable, especially when you come to a, a harder challenge um, that you might need to face in order to progress the main story. So he's been a good one. And then a surprise one I didn't think I was going to like, but is the Magician class. So the Magician has an attack where essentially he attacks with the full, like a deck of cards. So he'll like flourish them out in front of him and it will attack the enemies in the way that are hit by the cards. So he has that ability, and it's very, very effective. But then also he can summon like companions. I don't remember the exact terminology they use for it, but you summon these companions, and they fight with you, similar to the zombie where you can convert another enemy into a zombie. But this one, you just spawn it out of thin air. So it's a magician. What a magician summon all the time. You can pull a rabbit out of your hat, and the rabbit can go around and chomp people. And then randomly... You can summon also a tiger. So like a white tiger will just be running around and it has more health and does more damage, but it can occur like it occurs less often than the rabbit does. Um, and it's just it's fun to just run around with these companions going on. I think there's more abilities for the magician. I haven't leveled them up fully. But that's been a fun surprise to dive into and just see the abilities there. Now as you progress, excuse me. As you progress, another thing that makes it really cool is I mentioned these abilities that you know certain roles have, like the for example the rat with the poison ability and then being able to detonate things that are poisoned. As you progress, eventually you'll unlock the ability to customize your forms, and what that means is you can take another ability, just one, from another class and like. Put it into this one so for example i like the poison from the rat i can put that poison with my magician and now i have that ability in there so i can chomp at him poison an enemy and we're good to go i'm doing more status damage and then there's the passive abilities too you can unlock more passive slots as you level up totally your general level and those are just like status buffs. Maybe things do more damage over time, whether it's poison or your stun effects or your movement won't be affected even if you're weakened and things like that. Just something to benefit your gameplay. But with the customization, you can customize each and every class 
individually. It's not like a, a catch one or catch all. Yeah. So everything feels unique and its play style is different. And it's been a blast. It's been a blast to dive into um, with my playthrough so far of that 13 hours or so. The story for starting off so goofy is getting really intriguing. So your main quest as you start the game is you're nobody <laughs> and you stumble upon this magic wand. And the magic wand is what allows you to change the into these different forms. Well, the wand's not yours, so you are trying to return this wand or at least find out where this wizard has disappeared to. You need to find him because this grand wizard can kind of save the town and save the world that's being attacked by this calamity. The calamity is this big evil that is summoning all these monsters, taking over towns, causing the chaos. So your role is to find the hero for then the hero to save the world. And as you progress, you'll meet different characters. You'll meet his apprentice, who's kind of an asshole. You'll meet um, some scientists who try and help disrupt the calamity, slow it down, see what they can do to save the day. And as you're going along, you'll kind of obviously get more and more information about where this wizard, I think his name is Nostromagus, is located. And the twists and, turn that this, twists and turns that this story in this game takes is really intriguing and i'm excited to learn more and more there seems to be some kind of relationship between your character and the evil the calamity that is kind of going on so figuring out that information along with obviously discovering where nostromagus is it's cool it's cool um i think another thing too that is fun with this game is the world discovery so it's a big open map, and for the most part, you can just openly explore it. Maybe not fully, because certain parts will be cut off to you if it's like a too much of a higher level section. But figuring out the puzzles of like, okay, here's a locked door. How do I discover the opposite end of this locked door to essentially make like a shortcut for yourself? And you're navigating through the big world, you know, defeating monsters outside, obviously, maybe picking up some side quests to help other citizens and get some experience for yourself. Um, but figuring out those puzzles are satisfying. And like I said, for the most part, those harder areas will be locked off to you unless you somehow find a way to navigate your way through. And if you navigate your way through, you're going to learn fast if an area is overpowered for you. Those enemies are going to mess you up. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a good time. It's been a good time with this game. Um, obviously, I know a lot of people have already played this, whether it was on Xbox or PC. But being new to it with the PlayStation scope, um, it's just been a blast. It's been a really fun experience. Um, Drinkbox has hit it out of the park again. They have made... Uh, was Guacamelee and Guacamelee 2, which are a lot of fun. I don't know if I played any of their other titles, but great indie title. Um, if you guys are looking for something to play, it doesn't feel like it's super long of a game. Um, obviously, I've played 13, but I'm usually pretty slow in playing games. If you need that side thing or just something fun and entertaining, a little comical from time to time, I would highly recommend it. Give it a try or even just watch a trailer or something like that. See if it is for you. Um, but yeah, it's been a good time, so just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit here and share with you guys. Moving on to topic two. Kind of a little bit of a callback to a previous episode that we had had. Um, a while back, we had kind of talked about uh, the game side of things when doing like movies or different media, movies, TV shows, whatever, and their kind of their success rate. And we were talking about it because of the Halo show, which I haven't watched, but apparently not doing super great. Sorry, Paramount Plus. Um, so anyways, I was thinking back on this topic and it got me thinking like, hey, you know, I talked about those Mortal Kombat movies and how at least the first one seemed to be kind of like a cult classic or was really popular. People have fond memories of it. I was like, why don't I go back and rewatch them? Um, 
There are two movies in particular that I'm going to talk about today, and that's Mortal Kombat, the original, from 1995, and I'm going to talk about Mortal Kombat Annihilation from 97. I don't know if it was rose-tinted glasses <laughs> or whatever, but in re-watching these films, there's definitely stuff that, I don't know if just didn't age well or whatever, but some not great stuff in these movies. Let's start with the original Mortal Kombat. So Mortal Kombat 1 is definitely the better of these two films. It's almost as if it's like a tale of two movies. <laughs> and it start, it's, the way it starts off is very... Not campy, but it's rough. You get quick introductions of your characters. Here's your Liu Kang. Here's your Shang Tsung. Here's your Johnny Cage. Here's your Sonya Blade. Here's your Jax. Quick introductions to your characters. And when they interact with each other it's not great acting's not 10 out of 10 here <laughs> it's very cut and dry i guess you could say and that's like the first part of the movie you get on into like act two and act three and it picks up and i think that's definitely a saving grace for this it's a slow burn at that start but once you get to that point it's like oh okay all right, this was good. This was good. It was enjoyable. Some things about that first portion. Graphics, understandably, it's a 1995 movie. Some graphics are not going to age well. Some kind of do. Some work pretty well. I mean, it's not like, obviously, the best CG you're going to see in the world, or obviously up to date, but it's pretty good. It works. There's some, like, transitions of Shang Tsung turning into his, like, skull form or whatever, and... That looks great. And then there's other stuff. It's like, oh, reptile. You're an actual reptile in this film. Boy, you don't look like you belong at all. You are just standing out like a sore thumb. Yikes. So there's that. And then speaking of introductions, I mentioned how they're all relatively quick. We get the introduction to Lord Raiden. Now, if you know the Mortal Kombat games, Lord Raiden, protector of Earthrealm, you know, he's supposed to be this big guiding figure, wise, you know, not prophet, but, you know, uh, teacher, I guess you could say. And he's kind of a joke in this whole movie. He laughs at certain times, like, haha, the end of the world. <laughs> and doesn't seem uber concerned sometimes when explaining situations to our heroes and it's odd but the most odd thing in his introduction so Liu Kang is essentially going out his motivation is to get vengeance for his brother his brother's been murdered and he wants to get revenge on Shang Tsung the cause for it so he goes home to obviously deal with his brother's death and when returning home to the temple the monks raiden shows up all the monks are like oh my god it's raiden they're bowing and all this stuff and luke kang's like oh pff, who are you you're just an old man not really super old and the monks are like no 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 no. you know the tree of respect and they're apologizing to raiden stuff like that and luke kang says okay prove it and essentially they get in a little fight now, by little fight, I mean it's one move. Now, if I was going to convince someone I'm this big, important figure, you'd think I'd do something astronomical, Raiden uses lightning, maybe I'll do some lightning things, or I'll just lay the smack down on you. <laughs> no. You know how he convinces him he's Raiden? Liu Kang comes in with a punch, or some shit, I don't know, a strike. And Raiden does the the most dramatic arm flippy do on Liu Kang. And it's like, oh, it's the end of the world. <laughs> like this was the big move he pulled out of his, his ass to prove his point. <laughs> the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. This freaking arm flip. Just ridiculous. Ridiculous that that is what they decided. 
Oh, boy. So anyways, <laughs> moving on to once we get past the rough stuff. This movie definitely does improve in its second and third act. The fighting in the first act, act along with that arm flip, sucks. I will say maybe the Johnny Cage fight is okay. I don't know why movies decide to do leg sweeps. That little thing where they spin around, go low sweep on the ground. Looks like ass. <laughs> I don't know if it was just because they were trying to go with the real actors and not stunt actors, but it's so slow and so hokey. Just looks bad. Don't do it. But once they get on to the second act and start like the tournament stuff, the fights are really good. And props to Robin Show for that. Um, you might know him from uh, Beverly Hills Ninja, another favorite of mine. This guy cannot, can, is great. And, you know, makes sense. It's in his background, martial arts, stuntman. So, of course, he's going to do great. His fights that he has, fan-fucking-tastic. Johnny Cage's actor um, is going to have a fight with Scorpion later on in the movie. And that actually is really good, too. It's very compelling with the different like levels that they're fighting upon. And obviously dealing with Scorpion's abilities of the fire or the, the tether from his hand. Um, works out really, really well. So good on them. Good stuff there. Another highlight of this movie, along with the fights, is their practical effects. Ari mentioned the CG. Iffy. Iffy at best. When Goro shows up, it looks good. Granted, once again, aged. Duh. It's a movie that's... 20 plus years old <laughs> makes sense but honestly works out really well dialogue lining that up with the puppet could have been a little bit better but all four of his arms articulate he looks like he belongs there it's not this super standout thing of like wow that is highly robotic or you know whatever it looks good props to them Goro looks great um so we got the fight scenes that look great. We got Goro that looks good. We continue this, and the story really goes in. The tournament has started. This is the 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 one that's deciding the fate of Earthrealm. Outworld has won nine in a row. If they win a tenth, they can take over Earthrealm. So really comes down to this. And they do a great job of having each of our heroes, you know, fighting, 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 and doing really well kind of weird that the tournament's like half organized half not half take place in an actual ring where they fight and then the other half is just like oh we're on we're if we're johnny cage's thing we're in this weird skeleton <laughs> construction zone or we're on the beach very odd organization i don't know how that works but whatever um but yeah Goro's going to be built up as a threat. We know him as a previous winner, or at least we're told that in the story. We're going to see him beat up a bunch of jobbers in this film by just essentially throwing them to the ground. Art Lean, unfortunately, R.I.P., is going to get his ass whooped in front of our heroes and is used as a sacrifice to kind of motivate our friends. Um, but yeah, it becomes cool after that. Um, Sony's going to get captured by Shang Tsung after our heroes have defeated uh, Goro. And we're going to see them deal with Reptile, which, once again, Reptile's a fucking actual reptile in this thing. But then he becomes human like he's supposed to be. And we get another great fight between Reptile and Liu Kang. Good stuff there. Speaking of, music. Fucking dope in this film. Very, very good. Obviously, the Mortal Kombat theme, Reptiles theme is fantastic in here. Good. Good on them for the music. And we're going to carry on with the story. Liu Kang's going to have this great fight with Shang Tsung. Gets a, you know, a moment with his brother's spirit um, to kind of you know heal. Say, I'm sorry, I love you, blah, blah, blah. Spirit's inside you. Good, good send-off. Then we get our most awkward finish, where all our heroes are strutting down the road. Raiden's still being a goof. <laughs> Hero moment. Yay, we saved the world. And we immediately, 
immediately build the second one. Thunder, doom, gloom, clouds, everything. Wah! Shao Kahn arrives in the sky as the emperor threatens Earthrealm. The hero's like, no, Power Ranger style. Say they're not going to do that. And then we go to the end credits. So we're immediately building. They had a plan. We're going to do three movies. That was their original plan. They only did two. And it heads immediately into Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Now, when I say immediately, (laughs) the next movie opens with this same scene. Would that be a bad thing? No, of course not. You want to recap your audience, see where they're at. The weirdest thing. (laughs) And this is where Annihilation starts to before the explosion. We had our cast, right? We got our five heroes standing there. (laughs) When Annihilation came out, we had recasted a bunch of people. So, out of the five that stood there at the end of Mortal Kombat, only two remained. Sonya Blade was a different actress, Johnny Cage was a different actor, and Lord Raiden was a different actor. <laughs> Robin Show was the only, was only one to survive along with Katana's actress. So that's off the bat just like, uh, okay. <laughs> It's a whole different whole different group of people, especially if you watch these back to back. Just such a big like whoa, head scratching moment. So now obviously Shao Kahn's gotta be a big bad and we gotta build him up. Remember how I just said Johnny Cage got a new actor? Yeah, fuck that guy. We're gonna kill Johnny Cage. <laughs> Shao Kahn's gonna come in, kill Johnny Cage, big threat. Oh my god. So we get rid of that actor immediately. Thanks for coming in. Take your money. Take your donuts. See you later. And with this fight, it's going to cause the our heroes to kind of retreat and seek more help. Now, I will give Annihilation some props. I didn't watch this one as recently to as 95 Mortal Kombat, so I can't give too many details um, point to point. But one thing I can give Annihilation... This is a fan service movie. Big time. If you're into the Mortal Kombat games, you get so many characters in this movie. So many references. First movie. Didn't have as many. Obviously, you get the cast of characters that we're going to see. But not a lot of references to the game. Maybe four or five. You get the get over here, like, from Scorpion. You get Fatality. You get uh, Liu Kang's, like repeated uh kicks in the air uh machine gun style but this one you get a fuck ton of stuff so you got Liu Kang you got Katana we got Raiden you got Sonya who are from the previous movie obviously also Johnny Cage then we're gonna get Shao Kahn eventually being Shao Kahn we're gonna get Shinnok Sindel's gonna be resurrected we get Jade Motaro oh boy Shiva Nightwolf, Ermac, we get Cyrax, Scorpion, Noob, Cybot, Rain, Baraka, Smoke, Sub-Zero again, and Melina. Holy crap. A lot of characters. Very, very cool. Do all of them look great? No. Remember Motaro and my oh boy earlier? This man's a centaur. (laughs) Demon centaur. Yikes. Doesn't look super. Looks okay. Doesn't look super. Same with Shiva. No. <laughs> no. Not great. Not great. I get they were doing what they could for the time, but yeah, there's some there's some rough ones in here. Um so as the movie's going to go on, we're going to we're going to recruit Jax into our forces. Um I think he got his metal arms in this movie, which is like confusing because he didn't have metal arm. He still had his arms in the first movie. Yeah. Cyber ninjas are going to attack those two. They'll take care of them. Um, <clears throat> we get this weird point where uh, Luke Hang and Katana have to kind of travel to a different area. But instead of like a teleportation or like just traveling on foot, they take this weird like gyrosphere thing 
where they have to hold on like they're standing in an X. They hold on with their two arms and they put their feet in like, I don't know, some sleeves or whatever. And they're just like, a, not even a foot, maybe five inches, six inches away from each other, just staring at each other in the face. And they just whee, go through this roller coaster thing. So odd. So odd. So we got that. Um, Raiden, I mentioned being recast. I think this was maybe the only positive recast. <laughs> and Lord Raiden in this movie is so much better. Um, this guy definitely takes it a little bit more serious, or at least his character is portrayed that way. So I definitely enjoyed that. Um, especially just knowing the source material or knowing <laughs> the character. It's just way better. Way better than <laughs> whatever was going on in that first movie. Um, so anyways, like I said, I don't know. Having not rewatched it compared to mk1 just because of time constraints i'm just going off of memory and wikipedia <laughs> this movie was kind of all over the place like i said they were fan service like animalities are in here so Liu kang's gonna learn about his animality from night wolf which will lead to some horrific cg later on when he turns into a dragon um <clears throat> We get that. I think Molina, for being one of my favorite characters, just kind of gets bodied in this film. She's barely in it. You blink and you can miss her. Sindel seems to be like the big the big bad here, obviously, along with Shao Kahn, being resurrected, being brought to this fight to kind of deal with Katana. Makes sense. We, sim we kind of ran through that in Mortal Kombat 9 as well later on. Um... Yeah, it, it's an interesting movie. If you got time and you <laughs> you want to like you enjoy Mortal Kombat and you kind of want to have a laugh, Annihilation's one that's like, oh, you get to see all these cool cameos or like references, but then afterwards you're like, I can see why they didn't make a third one here. <laughs> this one did not perform super well. Um, they originally did have <clears throat> a three picture deal or that trio, that trilogy. Um, planned I wonder where it would have gone from there uh, I don't remember if it left out a cliffhanger let me see uh, let's see emerge victorious struggle animality <sighs> yeah that, that graphic of the dragon was gross let's see la, 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 la. Shinnok is dealt with by elder gods Mm -hmm. eh. Okay, to declare the fate of Earth shall be decided in Mortal Kombat. No shit. Lu defeats Khan and Shinnok is banished to the Nether Realm. Earth Realm reverts to its former state with Khan's hold over Sindel broken. She reunites with Katana. That's awkward. Like, I get she was under a spell, but that is probably one of the weirdest points. I don't know if they do super great explaining it. It's like, I'm really evil. And then all of a sudden, oh my god, you're my favorite daughter. <laughs> it's like, okay. Raiden is revived, apparently he died, uh, by the Elder Gods who bestow upon him his father's former position, so now Raiden's an Elder God. Before departing to the Immortal Realm, he joins Earth Realm Warriors for... He joins the Earth Realm Warriors to be there for one another, and the Earth Realm Warriors return home. So there was no cliffhanger after this one. Okay, so maybe the, the plot would have been following up with Shinnok after being banished, um, obviously Shao Kahn's kind of out of the picture now, being dead. Um, so we'll have, it, I assume it'd be Shinnok. Shinnok's the next big bad as long as, as far as my memory is. Um, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Well, we won't see, actually. Only we can predict. <laughs> I wonder if there's a script or something out there potentially, uh, revealing what that could be. Hmm. Hmm. It's weird that it stayed so late 2009 this film the third film was still being talked about whatever um but yeah those movies it's dumb fun once again it's 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 um the things you can go back and just be like this was a thing mortal kombat 1 i think is really is still really good i can understand why people like it so much obviously it's moments 
in i would say the later part of the film that are really exciting there's a lot of um good dialogue and like memorable moments with shang sung and his dialogue and seeing that revived in mortal kombat 11 the video game exploring shang sung's island shang sung looking like his film persona we get an older version and then we get the call back to his younger movie self that was really cool and walking through once again the island and the dinner area and the dungeons and catacombs there that it was once again that rewarding experience for people who have been invested in the story in the long run and i think netherrealm does a great job with that of you know rewarding their fans and their players <clears throat> so cool to see that translate over to the game universe um and then annihilation yeah like i said just big fan a lot of fan service i don't i can't pinpoint a hundred percent why it was so bad overall the story's fine i don't know if it was just like you tried to cram too much into too little like with all the characters that they're trying to reveal or if it was just execution potentially some things looked good some things definitely didn't look good i don't know if it's just an age thing of graphics Who, who's to say <laughs> um, but yeah annihilation is definitely more of the the fan service movie out of the two first one's worth a watch second one i wouldn't blame you for skipping <laughs> but yeah um so yeah those two those two movies are what they are um it's been interesting to see obviously the latest mortal kombat movie coming out in 2021 we've done a podcast on that a review i thought it was really enjoyable it wasn't perfect but it was cool to see the violence in that movie these movies don't have that as much seeing them go to that level still paying obviously homage to the games and stuff like that but taking a different spin on it with creating a brand new character and putting them into this universe um i think that movie did well enough that that will eventually lead to a sequel um but once again time will tell um but yeah it's still cool to see that reattempt, i guess you could say or that redo on this franchise in the film industry <laughs> um but yeah just wanted to revisit that especially after our last conversation of games to tv to movies and their success rate mortal kombat 1 mortal kombat annihilation <laughs> audio listeners aren't gonna get that good bad <laughs> this has been another episode of the wait what are we talking about podcast my name is brett aka enigma 911 and you can catch this podcast live every sunday over on twitch.tv slash enigma 911 at 8 p.m eastern you join the chat if you're a subscriber over there, we'd love to have you. But if you can't catch live, that's A-OK. -okay. It rolls over on YouTube and podcast services the very next week where it's broken out topic by topic and put as one big video and MP3 for your amusement on the following Friday. Last but not least, hashtag ad merch store. Get all your swag over there, T-shirts, cups, backpacks, and more. Rep the brand, support us, and we would love you for it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Another short one, short and sweet. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the topics um, and the conversation. Looking forward to hanging out with you guys again with either me or just a, or another guest. Uh, should be a good time. But thanks for giving this a watch, giving it a listen, and we will see you guys on the next one. Take care.